Okay, good, good. All right. Okay, um, let's get started. I'm gonna need to run this. All right, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're doing, uh, it's, it's like Groundhog Day. Um, so um, welcome to the uh, CIS 4398 Capstone Projects in Computer Science final demos. Uh, I really hope you're all as excited as I am to see what our students have come up with. We just had like a bunch of really amazing demos, which is why we're like six minutes late to starting. So that should really, uh, really should get you pumped up for this. So uh, but first, we need to talk about what is Capstone. Uh, now, if you were already here, this is going to sound very familiar. But if you haven't been, uh, the Capstone is designed to allow students to utilize the culmination of all of their previous coursework. Um, so uh, whether it's also outside experience uh, to build software as a team, uh, it, it presents so many interesting challenges as uh, working with a, in a team-based environment. It's not always easy. Uh, Students heavily collaborate on their projects from brainstorming, using Jira project management software, and collaborating uh, on their code through GitHub. Um, oh no. Many students also choose to use modern frameworks such as React.js uh, for developing web apps, uh, stopping by my office hours to run through logic and design. And students also take on hardware challenges, whether it be soldering, 3D printing, uh, working with embedded systems such as the Raspberry Pi microcomputer. Um, but developing software isn't just about writing code. We also ask students to document their projects from proposal to requirement specification, architecture design, and API specifications. Uh, we use a website builder known as Docasaurus to maintain all of these artifacts. And um, just to get right to it, we've had nine projects this semester, um, which is really cool. So if you're rejoining, um, it's uh, it's been really fun so far. Um, really excited to go through. So just going through the lineup again, um, we started this morning with Language Learning Discord bot, the Be Real Meet Slack bot, and the uh, uh, Code Review chat bot, so a lot of bots. Um, section two, we saw Lomo, Garden Sensor Array, and Smart Speech. Uh, and now next up, we're going to see Study Sync, Smart Mirror, and AR Pet Pals. So um, take, I've taken up a lot of time so far. Um, I want to just hand this off to Study Sync to, um, you know, kind of lead us to the uh, the end. All right. So um, yeah, Study Sync, uh, whenever you're ready. Okay, uh, can I share my screen? Okay. Um, hi, uh, my name is Harris, and um, our project is StudySync, which is a um, studying tool for students with uh, AI assistant and uh, social interaction to uh, improve learning. And uh, our team's gonna introduce themselves. Yeah, my name is Atu. Um, yeah, I worked on Study Sync with Harris and other guys. Hey, um, my name is Minji. Hey, my name is Jen. Hey, my name is Kai. My name is Li Feng. Excited to be here today. And uh, was that everybody? All right. Okay. So uh, um, I'll be demoing this project today with uh, the help of Kai. So uh, let's just get started. Um, so I have an uh, exam on web development next month, and uh, I wanted to use StudySync to help me study. So I'm just going to create an account. Enter my email. Okay. 
and uh, I'm led to the dashboard. Um, the first thing I want to do is uh, just go and customize my profile. And um, I just want to, because I'm a student, I'm just going to enter profession of student and tell other people that I'm a Temple University student. I also want to change my uh, image here. So let me just grab this image and just change it to this image so that uh, other users can see uh, this profile picture when they search me up. And uh, since I know my friend Kai is also using uh, StudySync, I want to go and add him. So I can just go to the social tab and find him. And I can see his name right here. I'm just going to add follow. Uh, Kai, uh, can you see a notification that says uh, I'm following you right now? Yes, sure. Can you just follow me back? Okay. Yeah. Did you receive? Yeah, I can see the uh, notification here. And now, uh, since we're following each other, um, we're now friends. And I can look at his profile. Okay, so now that I've done this, um, I want to create a, a new flashcard set to uh, study for my uh, exam next, next month. So I can just add a subject. Computer science, and inside computer science, I'm going to add the topic of web web development. And uh, after I created the topic, I can either create flashcards or a quiz. So right now, I'm just going to do flashcards real quick. And uh, here's a welcome card. Just going to delete this real quick. So here, I can add my own terms and definitions. Or I can uh, use the AI support, which uh, can also take in an image. So um, I want four uh, number of flashcards. Let me just use the image real quick. And here uh, it's going to use this image and generate four flashcards of uh, terms and definitions. Just wait a little bit for it. Now I can uh, see all these uh, flashcards here. Another way is to just um, give it a description and I'll just generate off of the description. So I'll just do web development terms and generate four flashcards. And I can see uh, newly generated uh, terms and definitions. I can also uh, tag them based on no, not sure, and don't know. And sure, and I can sort them through here when I'm studying. And I can go full screen here. OK. Now that I'm done uh, creating flashcards and studying for them, I want to test my uh, knowledge. So I can do this by going to study tool and navigating to the quiz section. And here's a welcome message to say uh, the quiz. I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to rename this to web development quiz. And I'll save this. And I can either add. Again, uh, add a question and uh, answer uh, multiple choice myself or use generate questions, which can uh, you can enter my a description to generate questions or uh, generate questions based on the flashcards that we just created. So right now I'm going to uh, generate quiz based on the flashcards I just created. So I'll do four questions based on no and uh, I'll just do easy for now. And I'll generate. And uh, I can see all these uh, questions now. So let's just go ahead and uh, take a quiz real quick. 
and question one. I'll just answer some questions. And in the middle of a quiz, um, I can also pause the quiz. And I can always come back and uh, resume the quiz. So I went out and get a got a coffee. Now I'm back and I want to resume the quiz. So I'll go back to the quiz in the my quiz in my sets. And I can click resume and come back and it saved my progress. And now I'll answer the final question and submit it. And I got my result, which is 25%. And uh, after I finished my quiz, I want to see how my friends did in their studying and uh, how they did on their quiz. So I can go to the leaderboard and check that Kai also took one quiz and his average is 20. And uh, this is the leaderboard that uh, shows all your friends and their statistics. And um, after taking this quiz, uh, I feel like uh, I did pretty decent, but I can always improve. So now, because my exam for web development is next month, I want to schedule this quiz to take it uh, right before the exam, so just so that it can uh, refresh my mind. So what I can do is go to my sets and look at uh, my quiz here. And now I'm going to schedule it, give it a name first. Refresh. I can't, sorry, I can't spell. Web development quiz before exam. And uh, I'm going to choose a date, the 21st. And just select time. PM, schedule it. And now the quiz is scheduled and it will send a notification on that day and that time. And you can see the events here in the events tab, which shows upcoming and past. You can also see uh, on the dashboard, uh, uh, some things have been updated like the upcoming events. And so are the uh, recent flashcards and quizzes that we just created. So another feature that I can also use to uh, study is uh, the social interaction part, which I, I just added Kai as my friend. So, um, Kai, um, do you have uh, any flashcards that you can share with me that I can use to study? Yes, sure. I'm going to show you now. Thank you. Can we see? Yeah, I just got a notification that says Kai shared a flashcard with me on data structures. So I can look at this by going to my sets and uh, going to share flashcards. And I can see that Kai shared uh, data structure flashcards with me. So I can look at this. And also I can comment on the these flashcards. And so um now I can uh look at this these uh flashcards anytime I want. Now I can also save to my flashcard. So now it's part of my uh own flashcard set that I can look at any time. And uh, these are all the features and um, of this app. And uh, this concludes our, our demo. You got a nice round of applause here, uh, right behind me. <laughs> um, um, yeah, this was awesome. Uh, I mean, this this app has grown so much from the beginning of the class to now uh so there are so many changes what were um you know what what inspired some of the uh the changes that you made um like what you know what what did you feel like was the most compelling feature to like work on um i think it's the ai generations especially you can upload images to generate those um, fresh cards and quizzes we make that some changes to the um to our projects since um uh, we know the chat GPT released their like ladies like GPT models. It's called GPT for uh vision preview. So uh it allows uh us to upload images to generate uh uh respond. So we we made that changes to our project. Okay. Yeah, no, they're and they're and they're good at they're good additions. Um were there any issues with using uh, GPT uh, to make this project? Um, uh, 
would it be something that you would recommend uh, students to use in the future? I would definitely recommend students use our project like before the final exam is really useful too. Yeah. Yeah. But working with GPT, uh, difficult or um, or like too difficult or 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 just right. I mean, you just hand need to handle the response from it. Like it took me uh, some time to fix that problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the uh, application. Nice. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Um, how do you generate the little gifts on the flashcards and quizzes? Hmm. Do you mean by AI? Uh, like, like oh, yeah. okay. Let let this SVGs. So it's M uh, You just have the we use the Lottie animation. It's, so you have to install like package and use the npm. Mm. And you just link to the images. It just run. Cool. Cool. Any questions? Uh, you know. How about uh? How about those in the uh in the audience? Any uh any questions? Let's see. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. Yeah, I think um, um, this project is very interesting because it help help us to remember very key knowledge point. You know, we know the knowledge is power, so it can can make us uh know more things. But sometimes I think, um, could we organize uh, the the group of the cards to organize them and to show, for example, and this group of cards belong to a chapter, the other group belong to the second chapter, and I can see the organization of these these cards. So it could be, it can help me to better review the knowledge in the future. Mm. I'm so, sorry. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, after after I create after I created uh those cars, could yeah. I group th those cars to uh an organization such 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 like a mind map or like a tree structure? Um, those group of cars belong to a chapter, and the other groups belong to another chapter. And I can organize them. Uh, I think that right now our apps just do um you when you, um if you want to use the fresh car feature, you have to create a topic first, and you all fresh cars will belong to that topic. Mm, so we'll organize the car the flash cars by topics. Yeah, yeah. It's basically yeah. subject and topics. Okay, that's good. Yeah, thank you. You are muted, yeah. Yeah, by, I, every time. <laughs> uh, can you talk about the um? Uh, Katrina's asking on um on YouTube. Uh, can you talk about like the testing and uh, and how you you know structured that? Like how how was this project tested? I think I can take that question. Um. So for the testing, we did three main testing and unit testing, integrations and acceptance. For unit testing, we um everybody tested um, on their own component, like their own like feature, especially like for example like quiz, like adding quiz, generate a uh, question from chat GPT and everything. And uh, we managed to finish all the unit testing uh, at the end of the weeks and everything was working or we have uh, approximately like 50 tests and all of them passed, uh, including the integration test. Same thing, we just need to incorporate uh, different components um, between social study tools, uh, flash card and quiz, etc. And, and yeah, I think that's how we test. Nice. Um, yeah, uh, additionally asked, um, uh, and, and is curious to know, did you, um, uh, like, how did you deploy your application and like, did you use, um, you know, any continuous integration, continuous deployment methods? Yeah, like, we're, yeah, yeah, we can just use the GitHub actions in our project. Nice. No, that's, that's big. I mean, that's, that's not easy. Um, um, 
Hi, I'm Jacob Snar. Yes, we know who you are. <laughs> um, uh, um, any any other questions over here? Oh wow, wow, it's like it's like a full house in here. Um, no, I just showed up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Um, did I ask you what was the most technically challenging uh, part of the project? I feel like I did, but if I didn't. <laughs> Did they say GPT? GPT. Yes, you did. You, you did yep. about that. Yep. Huh. That's weird. Um. Okay. Um. What would you What would you change going forward? Like, is there any uh, additional um, elements or or pieces that you would add or or change? Uh. Yeah. Definitely, we will have a like study session features, so users can invite their friends to like participate. To join the study session, to study together, I think that's um, that's very important features. If we can I have time to implement that, hmm. yeah, no, that's um, yeah, that's really uh, that's really great. Um, just to pick it back on uh, what Shen said, um, we can definitely looking forward to like um, yes, yeah, like you said, a study session where like everybody can come in and join and study like flashcard together or maybe like uh create like a sort of a, a quiz competition where they could um take quiz everybody can take quiz at the same time and then um, um just competing <laughs> okay all right um how did you guys feel about working in a group yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> um, that's uh, yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> no, um, every everything peachy. <laughs> um, no, it's uh, uh, no. I ask because I know I know that that this the one of the most difficult aspects of this of this class is working in a group where they're um, you know. Uh, do you feel like you know from beginning to end that the uh, that that as as you develop that you got better with working in a group or um, are there any any things that you know that maybe I should change to make the uh, the course better in that way? Um, oh, go ahead. I think it was great, honestly. Um, overall, like I think everybody kind of like picked their strengths and each and. I think one of us working on, on our strengths kind of made us work cohesively a lot better. Um, Some people in the beginning kind of didn't have the most experience with like web, web development, but like throughout the semester, we kind of all kind of picked it up together and we were able to work as a unit. So yeah, everybody pretty much pulled their weight and, you know, it was a collaborative effort. So yeah, I don't really have any like negatives, just all positives. Nice. Positives are good. Positives are good. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, do we have anybody else that needs to comment? Any burning questions, desires, or thoughts? I'll be just a moment. Okay, um, so uh, our next demonstration, we need to wait maybe a minute for, um, uh, it's, a, it's a hardware project. So they're kind of gathering everything up to, to bring to my office um, here. So um, so just kind of extending the, the question answer a little bit longer or um, you know, any, any burning uh, questions, honestly, you can, you can even ask me questions. Um, anybody, uh, any? stall for a minute <laughs> i have a question oh yeah yeah hey uh, i loved your project i thought it was awesome definitely something i could see myself using um do you guys think it would be possible for when you make the quizzes you know a lot of professors will give 
like sample tests, you know, that have a similar structure, similar kind of questions to what, you know, an exam is going to look like. Do you think it'd be possible to like input that kind of, you know, like a sample test and then generate, you know, an exam based off of what the sample test looked like? Yeah, yeah, sure. You can just like screenshot your wherever it is and just give it to upload the image. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. I, I think it's a great tool. I would definitely use it. I wish I had something like this, you know, sitting for my final. So yeah, great job, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Did you find that like with the um with the AI generation of flashcards, did it ever hallucinate something that was like wrong, maybe in uh like from your uploaded documents? Was okay. It pretty we good? Yeah, a lot of time because um, generally you have to convert uh, the images to like base 64 string and then send it to GPT. So it took me a lot of time to fix that problems. Sometimes mm -hmm. I got respond from GPT like invalid like input or invalid the uh, image format. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you use any of those like GPT features where um it like where you like force it to structure things as JSON or did you use like like very specialized prompts of JSON? I just gave an example. You just gave it an example. Wow. Okay. That's pretty that's pretty good for uh for that. Um, <laughs> um, okay, uh, uh, Katrina's got a question. Um, for anyone who had jobs or internships in the field, how did working on this project compare to that? Um, anybody, I know some of you had some industry experience. No, no, Otto? no, not yet. We haven't have any experience with the job field. Mm. I was actually working full time this semester, forty hours a week. Oh um, man! And yeah, there were a lot of overlaps, especially like with the whole sprint planning thing and like you know the project management aspect. There were a lot of overlaps in that aspect, and also when it came to unit testing, yeah, unit testing when I was interning this past fall was really big. Like I couldn't submit a PR unless it was unit tested. So yeah, there yeah. were overlaps, uh, <laughs> to, you know, yeah. in the class. Nice. Nice. Was, That's good to hear. Yeah, I think <laughs> that was pretty much it. Yeah. But yeah, this was definitely like one of the most like useful classes in terms of like preparing you for like post-grad um, work. So yeah, I definitely wish we had this earlier on. Mm. Yeah. Do you feel um I, I'm I'm just stealing questions from YouTube. Katrina's just pumping them out. Um, are you uh going to keep this uh free and open source? Or are you thinking about maybe like would you monetize this sort of like Quizlet does? Um I not mean, thinking that far ahead. <laughs> sure, but you have to pay for the GPT. <laughs> <laughs> I have to pay for the GPT. Yeah. Um I don't know. <laughs> Everyone, everyone's like uh, fleecing me for money. <laughs> um, um, or, or, or um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, if you were to go the free method, someone would have to provide the API key. Is, yeah, is yeah, yeah. <laughs> How are you accessing it right now? Like, is it behind some sort of server backend or? Uh, we use the Firebase call functions. We. Nice. Yeah, yeah, we'll call it that. So, so Cloud Functions has the API. Yeah, yeah. The API key, nice. Um, what was performance like? Uh, with that, because I know, um, you know, in the morning uh, section, the code review chatbot um did a sort of similar method using, I believe, they were using like AWS Lambda, um, and you know, the. The, the 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 outputs that it generated were actually like quite large um so um how were how was performance um with like just generating the flashcards it's uh i think the gpt is returning which i checked the console like so returning a lot in json format so i, I think what, what we need to do is just extract the the fresh card like turns of definition final nice nice it's amazing. Yeah, no, um, yeah, like 
kudos to uh, uh, those working uh, while finishing up school. That was from from Katrina. So like, yeah, it's it's this is this is a tough class to balance with other things. Um, but uh, it looks like it looks like we're almost uh, uh, ready. Um, so we might have like just a minute to uh, sort of uh, get together. But really, really great job. Uh, um, yeah, really, really great job. Thank you. Guys. Uh, welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, uh, now please hold <laughs> while we uh, while we prepare for the next demo. Yep, they're uh, okay. you're, you're live now. Yep, top of the morning, everybody. I'm, <laughs> I'm Charles. Um, we was running a bit of traffic today, so excuse that. But today, oh, we're going to be smart. Why is there an echo? I think it's one of those. Oh, okay. Um, you know. 
Start again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So good morning, everybody. I'm Charles. I am here with my group. Is everybody here? And I'm already two members. <laughs> um, today we're going to be presenting Smart Mirror. So, does that mean that is me? Okay. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Excuse me. So, Smart Mirror is an interactive step in between getting information and merging with your daily routines. So, just about everybody here, as part of your daily routine, has a mirror inside their home. And in that mirror, you might see yourself brush your teeth, do your makeup, do your hair, etc. But who says the only thing you have to see in the mirror is your own reflection? Smart Mirror's goal is to bring together all these things and give you an interactive infotainment system that gives you the information you need to go on about your day at a simple glance. So to start off, we're gonna be presenting, are you gonna do it? Uh, yeah, I can do it. Are you do it? We're gonna have Devin here present our campaign that for our project. Yeah. Don't connect the audio. <laughs> okay. So here's our um, companion app. So first thing we can show off is just uh, our basic sign up system. So we can enter a username and password. So um would any of you like to uh, enter your email? Sure, I got it. Oh. Okay. So um, Greg is going to enter a his email and a password. And um, if this is a little too much of a hassle, we also have a sign in with Google option. Oh, okay, you can sign in with uh, Google. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can just enter your stuff. I have to reset my password after this. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> it's a really advanced uh, two factor code there. Nine. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> this went German. There you go. Okay, so now you can uh, click on your user. Oh, and it's going to verify again. <laughs> Google, Google authentication. Nice. Google moment. Access point. Okay, um, we can just sign it with my account. Yep. Since, um, okay. Google Yeah. So, uh, okay, so we're going to sign it with my account instead. So, okay. Okay, so now that we're into the app, so we can go to our dashboard and we will see that we have um, a little cute, silly username that is randomized on login or on sign up, I guess. Uh, and then we also have a mirror status. So currently we are not connected. So we need to scan a QR code that is present on a mirror that has not been logged into yet. So if you would like to show off. Okay, so I'll use so this is the smart mirror. Now, as you can see right now, it's just a normal mirror. We got a little tissue here over the camera, but with every move you stand in front of it, the display turns on. And that's gonna be our facial recognition technology. So we have a QR code here. Does this show up on the camera? Do you want to turn off the lights? Um, you can turn them down. Uh, it switches over there. All right, good. So I'm going to um, scan the QR code. <laughs> Okay. 
There you go. Just hold it. Perfect. Okay, so now we're at the login screen for the mirror. So we can uh, log in again, and it will link our account to the mirror. So oh, uh, it should be connected. Uh, okay, we can try again. Oh, okay. I think um, so. Get to sign out really quick, and then do it. Okay, let's sign Google again. Okay, so can you want to stop sharing? Oh, yeah, I'm not in the Zoom. Here, I'll join it. Yeah, you're right here. Yes, yeah. does it show up? Oops. Yeah. So we can see now that I'm logged in. There you go. Okay, we can see now. If it, if it focuses, <laughs> now I'm logged in. It's backwards because you had a camera, but I'm logged in. If you come look over here in the mirror, all the information from my phone and my account is now synced with the mirror. So at the top left, we have our date and time, which this doesn't show very well, but it's there. It's good. We have our date and time. So right now it's going to be 428. We have seconds too, and it's the 11th of December. And if you look at the bottom left here, we can see the news that's like relevant for us. So all the top trending stories right now. And at the top right, we have our current temperature and weather. We have clear skies and it's about 40 degrees outside. Which, uh, if you want to check the weather, it does match. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and this is synced. So like all this will be synced with your location if given. Otherwise, it just defaults to Philadelphia. Which we can talk about in the settings. You want to talk about the settings? Um, so, this is the settings we have data and privacy. So, we have a toggle switch for the location to be turned on. Wouldn't change much because so give a pop to allow your location to be tracked. It wouldn't change us because we're already in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yeah. And with tracking and analytic. And for the accounts, you see how. Charles has his name as Saitama. If we were to change the name to like Tony now and hit save changes, give a pop up. Look, because that account has been updated successfully and it switched over to time to rest Tony. <laughs> Next, if you ever want to change your password or email, you're able to change your password and email here, but I don't want to log out the Charles account, so we'll keep it. and. We have a settings where you can change your birthday. So open the calendar. So let's say our birthday is December 23rd on the 11th. And I'll ma and we are a male because of gender. <laughs> and then we can save the changes. So, and then we have a setting where we're allowed, where it's allowed to um, keep the mirror on permanently or not. So when it's turned on, it will turn off the option to turn the interval. But when you turn it off, it will allow you to uh, set an interval for 30 minutes or six minutes or two hours. And we have an authorized app, which is we can authorize Spotify. So when we hit this, it will let you go to if it's not that account that you want to go to. Uh, I don't know my info, I don't think. Hold on, let's see. Me neither. All right, all right. Mine. So you say you, look, you know yours? Yeah. Well, OK, it's a. I can enter the password. <laughs> yeah, don't say it out loud. <laughs> um, oh, no, I was gonna, okay, so I have the, I like never use this. I don't know. I have a are. Google randomized password, so I have to. Oh. Mm. Yeah, so. The uh, the general theme of all of the uh, presentations have been passwords. Mm -hmm. um, so.
Okay. So now we are, so now we can just hit agree. And then, uh, yeah, we have to log back in. So that could be. Is it my idea? Yeah. Yeah. So that the nearest now connected. So if we play a Spotify song, I don't have Spotify buffalo. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunate. But yeah. we could imagine right here where it says now playing, this would sync with their Spotify account. So obviously right now nothing's playing, but if we were to put on music, it's that playing. Nice. Nice. Okay. That's not girls. <laughs> so as you can see here, you're probably wondering why they're just like a blank widget there. Um, we also have the ability to authorize and use Fitbit. However, due to technical, you know, it's currently, you're not able to actually sync them, but it defaults to everything being zero because I don't have a Fitbit, so. Okay. And this is Project Luma. All right. It's no longer smart mirror, mm -hmm. it's Project Luma. We've rebranded. We've rebranded. Re yeah. 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 re it's a great rebrand. No, it looks great, guys. No, it's it, it's awesome. Um, uh, does the audience have any questions? Thank you. Yeah, hang on. I'm gonna. <laughs> this is this is very being both cameraman and, and I don't know what is this called stream master. Um. Oh yeah, go for it. Go for it. Okay. So on um, customizable data. Uh, it's shown on the mirror, or, or okay, how customizable is the data that's shown on the mirror? Customizable in what sense? For example, I noticed widgets like Spotify and Fitbit. What if I use Apple Music or Samsung Health? <laughs> <laughs> what if I want the, the, the clock displayed bigger or not at all? I'm glad that so... Katrina is also outing herself for using Apple Music because I'm, I'm also <laughs> <that> cool. <laughs> so... So as, well, right now we don't support Apple Music or, you know, any other music media. However, <laughs> as far as customizability, you do not right now, but it's there, I promise, it's there. Have the ability to drag the widgets around and customize where you want them to be placed. So once that app is fully finished, if you wanted to, like, say, movie and news up there or disable it entirely, you would have the option to do so. Nice. All right, just so we don't give a, a Blair Witch project uh, to the audience, <laughs> I'm going to switch back to uh, the normal camera. Um, what's your, what's your plan? Go for it, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, okay, this should should be nice and different. Um, okay, are there any other questions? Nice presentation, yeah. Okay, I have questions. Um, what was the uh, uh, most difficult part of getting this mirror together? Um, Can we go individually? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, like, um, like from a software or hardware stance? Uh, this, this is this is a very open ended question. Okay. So, <laughs> um, hardware problems. Yeah, one of the biggest hardware problems was actually figuring out how to build it because yeah. you kind of just went into this blind. Mm -hmm. But it's not working out. There were there was some issues with like adhesives, mm -hmm. so the back of the mirror like continued to fall off. And I had to just get more stuff to put it together and make that work. But from the hardware stance, it wasn't too bad. Now from the software side, working with Pi and Linux was extremely difficult because you're kind of thrown into a blank canvas to figure out like a literal blank canvas. Like you can do anything you want in there. Yeah. But with all that, it's like little guidance. So figuring that out was a little troublesome. Mm -hmm. I do not use Apple. Me Katrina. <laughs> um, oh, that's based. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I might be the only one in here that uses it. Anyways. I can talk about. Uh, yeah. So yeah, go for it. Some of my biggest hardships were. Um, so we use a backend as a service, a, like a cloud provider for our database. Mm -hmm. And authentication for that was really tricky. And being able to um save and being able to update um and uh select data from that was really difficult mm. and it took a while to figure that out yeah yeah 
Um, uh, okay. So since you are um, a hardware project that did this in an online classroom, what were some of the, the difficulties and would you recommend, I mean, would you recommend another online class take on a hardware project or is it something where uh, it's sort of like a steer clear? <laughs> um, I could, okay. So since, since most, since, okay, so we do have a hardware project, but a lot of the like core of it is mm -hmm. um, a lot of web development stuff. So even though like Charles was the main person to work on hardware, like he took the mirror home um, mm -hmm. and was working on like the, the pie and stuff. We were still able to um, emulate it through a browser, so it was really useful to make it mainly web development. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, something to note uh, for the for the audience, as you saw in the uh, the intro introduction, um, you know, these students came into my office to build this thing, um, and that was that was also you know. It was almost, uh, you could say it's almost the easy part, um, but uh, it, it, it has a lot of, um, has a lot of character. Um, would you, um, what would, what would be some of the um, advancements uh, that you would, you know, that you would want to make in the future? Can I speak a little bit on this? Yeah. So, I mean, one, one issue that I saw right away is like, the monitor that we got only takes up half the screen. I, I personally think it would be nice to kind of have like almost like a TV monitor and mm -hmm. turn it sideways. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like one change that we could have worked on a lot better. Also, just kind of having hardware experience. I mean, none of us really have any hardware experience. So, you know, a lot of these like minor dents and, and uh, you know, um, like, I don't know what else to call it, injuries almost. Like, I think that those could have been avoided if we had like, more background um, experience with it. But I think it's a great learning process still. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at least we can say we worked on a hardware project. So, yeah. yeah. No, it's really good. Um, you know, speaking from experience, uh, these types of projects, like a hardware project in an online capstone, very difficult. Very, very, very difficult. I've seen projects not make it um that were that were hardware based and online so you know this is this is definitely an achievement um uh, i think our tech stack helped us a lot yeah being able to keep up yeah 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 absolutely uh does the audience have any other uh questions um can you talk more about the challenges in integrating hardware and software in this project what materials did you need to buy what materials did you need to buy so, um, I mean, all the materials here, it's, it's not too demanding. So we have a two-way mirror panel. Here, I'll let you. Um, now you can just use this. Oh, okay. It takes like a second to connect. All right. <laughs> here it goes. There you go. Have fun. Okay. <laughs> um, can they hear me okay from over here? Yeah. Okay, I, well, so... I hope. Okay. Um, yeah, so we have a two-way mirror panel, which as you can see, like down here, for example, where no light is reflecting, it's completely reflective. So we can see pretty much the whole room behind us. However, when you have light projecting through it, you're able to see that light. Um, right now we have an LCD monitor. So that's what's behind here. This will be better if we had an LED monitor so we can get true black. You can you can kind of see it on camera. It's definitely better in person. But you can see kind of where the border is like down here because this isn't true black unlike this. So if you had an LED monitor, that would be better. Um, as far as other hardware, it's just things like adhesives and whatnot. I have wood at home, so that wasn't too much. We have a camera. This is my camera, but we, yeah, we didn't order a camera like we were supposed to. <laughs> but, yeah, and aside from that, I mean, we can look behind it. Did we use the portal for the recording? No, that was, yeah. Um, thank you. <laughs> and this oh. is not working. So we kind of ripped apart this monitor so like out of its housing so we can put it into here. This frame in itself is just a picture frame that's sturdy enough to hold it. We got our wood, like I said. And this here would be the pod that is the 
apart with everything that's happened in there. Pi four. I believe. Yeah, it is pi four. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> doing it live yeah. so as far as hardware goes it wasn't too bad but again it was interesting to figure it out as you can see here it's kind of like tape holding this all the circuitry on here and yeah we kind of had to cut into the frame to make stuff fit the way we wanted to yeah but like i said it wasn't too demanding yeah it's fun it's um yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty amazing. Um, you know, like having to just kind of like shove everything into this into this mirror. Um, were there any um, were there any other challenges um, in in designing and making this um, that you feel are like relevant? Um, I guess it's kind of one of those things when we first envisioned this project. It seemed like. Yeah, like I know where it wants to be, mm -hmm. but that one, that vision wasn't fully solidified. So going in and building something when you don't have a full idea of like what you want, just an idea of what you want, that's kind of challenging. Like I, like I mentioned before, it would have been nice if you had like a bigger monitor in the back. It'd look better all together, I think. But you know, you built the cards you got. Yeah, yeah. No, I I think you know circumstances being everything making this in an online uh session um very very successful um audience is impressed uh um <laughs> you know so i i would say yeah great good job yeah can question can you talk more about like the architecture so there's like a raspberry pi on the mirror is it like hosting a web server um like so during his original designs it was actually local hosting a server but now that we have the project um, deployed, you can visit it whenever you want, projectlumina.app. It is now rendering that website on there. It is however having like one local server running just to gather things like weather. Yeah, but, so currently um, you can see your mirror if you go to projectlumina.app slash mirror. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to talk about the um, module view thing you plan? Oh yeah, so it's not currently, Oh. It's not currently um, a thing, but in the future, we plan to implement a module view system where you can view all of the modules that are on your current mirror and drag them around and change their position and toggle which ones you want to see. And also other things like uh, customization. Um, eventually, um, someone did say something about having Apple Music instead of Spotify. We could... Um, literally just me <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah just for just for um professor applebaum we could uh you need money first it costs money if you use apple oh yeah it does it's like what a hundred dollars developer license oh um kai has a, a pretty interesting question spicy question um he says he's concerned about the waterproof proofing of this mirror where is this mirror recommended to be placed in the house because if it was in a bathroom uh, could it be damaged by water? Um, as far as physical design, you know, we didn't get that far as exposed circuitry back there. <laughs> yeah. But ideally, with a finished product, there would be like a um, tempered finish in the back. Mm -hmm. So it would be fine against elements. Yeah. I mean, direct water contact isn't good for any device yeah. or anything, rather. But it would be able to withstand things like humidity in your bathroom. Yeah. Because for me right now, I'll probably put it in my room next to me because I usually forget to charge my phone when yeah. I go to bed. So when I wake up, I look at the mirror, I like you know, like the time and the weather. Yeah. That I like, need a like, way to charge my phone. Yeah, same, same. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping this up. <laughs> um, I have no uh, idea where I'm going to put it. As you can see, uh, sadly, the audience now knows uh, how lived in this office just is now. Put it up there. <laughs> um, put it up there. Put it up there. If it falls, I mean, and... then I yeah, then I then I die for a good cause. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, if you're keeping it. We're gonna have to actually add Apple Music integration. Uh, yeah, you are. You are. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I got here late. How do the colors look on the display? Do you utilize them in many areas besides the Spotify widget? Maybe a yellow theme for Apple Bomb. Thanks, Snar. <laughs> um, so. As far as colors go, this green is actually really experimental. This is like a last minute thing. Because like I said, certain colors, we wanted to keep it so it's like direct contrast. So when it came to picking colors, it has to be a good color. Yeah. Um, definitely would have been better to pick colors if we had an LED monitor. 
Mm-hmm. Like I said, it's easier to see in person, but there's still like certain angles in which it looks weird. Mm-hmm. So I think having colors in the eye made it a little bit harder to see, especially something like like a yellow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like viewing angles wise, it's really not bad. Um, considering I mean, it's behind, behind the mirror, the lights are off. It's like, yeah, you're probably standing yeah. right here. Like, yeah. that's just the nature of LCD monitors, anyway. Yeah, but like, if I'm standing here, that kind of I see more reflection than the actual like monitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, also for um, demonstration, the original <laughs> backing of the monitor. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> there's been a this office has seen things. Um, okay. Um, are there any other budget friendly setback projects sometimes? Yeah. Or maybe. Oh, uh, that's actually a good question. What made you want to create this? It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. And it, it, again, it's one of those things that seem useful. Like most people buy like an Echo Dot or something to put into their bathroom mm-hmm. just to add something easier to their routine. Yeah. Why not take it a step further? Yeah. Again, who says you only have to see your own reflection in your mirror? True. I'll, I'll add when when we were coming up with ideas for the project, I will say we did chat GPT <laughs> uh, project <laughs> the capstone, <laughs> and it came up. Yeah, it was fun. That is funny, actually. Yeah, <laughs> a smart mirror was uh, a capstone project that um that ChatGPT thought was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. What were some of the other ones that it came up with? Oh, so Do you remember? I don't even remember it. something with uh, I think like a parking something or other. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's always a parking project. Um, okay. Well, that was really interesting. Um, well, I think we should let. AR pet pals, um, you know, go next. Um, this was uh, this was pretty amazing for the uh, for the time. Oh my god! I'm sorry, guys. Um, I think motion sickness. Sorry for anyone in the audience with motion sickness. Um, yeah, really, uh, really amazing work. Um, <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's get this uh, this circus. Um, back on wait no that's, that doesn't make sense circus back on track there's no tracks of a circus um let's uh let's get this uh back uh back going more demos we have one last demo i know it's going to be a lot of fun so um ar pet pals when whenever you're ready uh just just take take the stage how's it going guys uh, yeah, Anya just suggested, uh, let's get this show back on the road. I think, uh, maybe that's a good one. No. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so, uh, my name's Dario. Um, so this semester, uh, my group and I worked to develop AR Pet Pals. Um, AR Pet Pals is an AR-based mobile app, uh, and our aim is to help you embark um, on a journey to better health and fitness uh, in an interactive way. Um, so by integrating real world activity tracking along with object recognition AI, AR Pet Pals uh, transforms your daily movement and nutritional choices into uh, a fun adventure of caring for your virtual pet. Um, so this pet lives in your real world environment, right in your room at home or wherever you choose. Um, and so our virtual pets, just like real animals, need care and attention and their happiness and health depends on your choices in the real world. So this is where we've used uh, object recognition AI, where your food decides, uh, the food you decide to eat directly affects your pet's health. And additionally, the amount of steps that you can record in a day affects your pet's happiness. So today, he is going to be playing uh, AR Pet Pals on his phone. So he's going to start sharing his screen. Um, so he's going to go ahead and uh, open up AR Pet Pals. Um, so he's going to go ahead and register a new account. 
Uh, this is his first time downloading the game. Uh, so he's going to go make a new account. Uh, he's going to choose his username, his password. He's going to confirm his password. Um, and also uh, put in his birthday as well. Perfect. So the first thing that he can do is uh, choose his pet. So he has a couple different options. Um, he's going to go through and check them out, see which uh, egg kind of speaks to him. Uh, and it asks, are you sure? Um, just make sure uh, that you choose the, the egg that you want. Okay, so he went with the blue one. Um, so now he can uh, give a give a name to his pet. Perfect. Um, so uh, the app uh, opens up. Uh, he might need to uh, reset it. Um, you can see here, uh, each time that you reset your app, uh, we have a loading screen. Um, this checks to make sure that the user is logged in um, and to initialize the AR. So um, at first, he's going to go to his, uh, his settings menu. Um, maybe he decided that he doesn't want the music playing. Um, so he can change that. And then he also decided that he doesn't like the name uh, Abby, and maybe he wants to change it to Jojo. Much better. And then, um, uh, so he can X out. Um, and then, so these uh, white dots you see um, on the plane, that is the AR uh, technology scanning uh, for planes. So wherever you see the white dot is where he can make uh, the dragon fly. Um, so he can have it come closer to him or move farther away. Um, and you also, uh, when you see your dragon um, idling, uh, you should have got a sneak peek there um, of some animations that that your dragon will do uh, while sitting still. Mm -hmm. um, so he uh, can go ahead and uh, open up the activity tracking. Um, so this is where you can uh, track your steps. So start walking and track your steps to increase your pet's happiness. So you just click confirm. Right now it's set to a thousand steps. Um, and once you reach a thousand steps, um, your pet will gain full happiness. Um, so this is sort of where, uh, you know, you take your pet for a walk. Um, he can only take a couple of steps, uh, so he can actually pause it uh, and come back to that later since he's he's just in his room. Um, now, I uh, I want to pass it off to Carl to talk about the uh, object recognition and the uh, food feature. All right, great. So after tracking some of the steps, he's going to find some food to look at here. And uh, with the application, we can find some food here and hit the scan button. And then the application will take a scan of the image and give a couple suggestions of what it believes to be. So as you can see, he saw a donut and that was one of the options that was given to him. So he can, he can uh, select the donut here as what he saw to eat. And now he can see not only the nutrition facts, but also his pet eating its own donut and um, watching its happiness go up. Uh, but in this case, since the donut isn't the healthiest food, it doesn't impact the health as much as maybe a, a bowl of lettuce might be.
And I think we have one other food here as well. So just to show um, the contrast between the donut and some of the other foods, we're gonna, he's gonna take a look at this food here. And you can see that, let's get one more scan here. There we are. So we have these three options here, but we also have a fourth option at the bottom. There's a search option. So if he couldn't find the uh, food that he was looking for, he can also search our database of a bunch of different food options and select that so that the, uh, the animal can eat it. So he can type into the search bar, uh, is lime, for instance, here. And then select that. And there we go. Uh, the pet is now eating the lime, and you get to see the nutrition facts uh, for your own benefit of how healthy a lime can be. And now I'm going to pass this off to Anya to discuss the player leaderboard. Okay, so um, the leaderboard feature was made to add a competitive nature to the game because uh, the goal of AR Pet Pals is to make leading a healthy lifestyle fun and like motivate users to meet their health goals. Um, so if he, if you go to the, if he goes to the settings menu and then presses stats, you'll see the leaderboard uh, here. So uh, this feature um, helps users uh, meet their health goals and motivates them by ranking users in order of their activity for the week and comparing them to other users. Um, so this, um, if you see the scores uh, by each of the users' names, uh, these scores come from the sum of all activities for the week. Um, so their total health and happiness scores um, associated with the uh, food that they ate and scanned, um, which has a, a score associated to it in our database. And then also their total step score for the week. Um, and so these um, two scores are summed together to create an overall score, um, which is used to calculate um, the user's place on the leaderboard. Um, each week, the score resets so that users can have a fresh start um, if they want to see where they are on the leaderboard and decide they want to try harder to make healthier choices. Um, so yeah, users can increase their score for the next week um, by making healthier food choices, like instead of eating a donut, they could eat a salad um, and that will give them a higher score. Um, and then same if they only took like a thousand steps for the whole week, next week they can take 5,000 steps instead and their score will increase um, and they will have a better chance at appearing on the leaderboard here. So we chose to display only the top five users on the leaderboard. Uh, we Each week uh, we calculate everyone's scores and make a list of everyone's score ranking in order from like most to least, and then display, like I said, only the top five um, users and their scores on the, on the list. Um, so um, we also have notifications um, set up to remind the users to feed their pet um, and interact with it. Um, if um, he closes the app um, and goes to where his notifications are in his phone, uh, he'll see there's two notifications here right now. Usually these would go off um, uh, once a day at different times, but for the sake of the demo, they're going off like every 15 seconds. But if he taps on the notification, um, it'll open up the app where he uh, had left off. Yeah. Um, so now I'm going to pass it back to Dario. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, our final feature, uh, we wanted to showcase what would happen if you don't take care of your pet. Um, so we have a special button here. Uh, it's the uh, ghost on the top left. Um, this will not be included um, in the 
gameplay for the public, but for the demo purposes, it's here. So he can go ahead and um, start taking away some health. Um, and if he leaves a little bit, you can see that the pet is now sad. Um, so this happens if the health is too low or if the happiness is also too low. Um, your pet will just kind of sit there and uh, look very sad. So uh, he can take away some more health. Um, you can see that your UI is gone um, and your pet dies dramatically. Um, so uh, your pet uh, passed away, please hatch a new pet. And you can see back there the uh, tombstone of your, of your dead pet. So you can now just click exit um, and it'll take you back to your pet choice um, to hatch a new pet. Um, and that's it for our demo. Uh, thank you guys very much. Can you please assure me that no dragons were harmed in the making of this demo? Um, I have no comment on that. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, it was so good. It was so good, guys. Uh, it's, you know, I, I don't know what it, what it is with, uh, with, my, with my capstone projects. We keep getting virtual pet projects, but they're always fun. Um, what inspired uh, you to make this, uh, this particular project? Um, yeah, so I, uh, um, like pitched, uh, I guess the idea, um, it definitely, it definitely changed, um, but kind of like my original idea was just, um, sort of AR, um, applications in general. Um, my original idea for the app was actually for AR glasses. You know, mm -hmm. at some point, I think everyone's going to be wearing AR glasses. And my idea was kind of having a little pet on your desk while you were um, kind of doing your work with these glasses on. Mm. Of course, we don't have that yet. Um, so the next best thing is your phone. Um, and, uh, you know, the phones have, uh, you know, great AR capabilities. Uh, and uh, yeah. Really want to get uh, the Vision Pro headset just for this class and just for this project. Um, it would be very cool. No, actually, that would, that's a great, segue. that would have been great hardware to request. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't, I don't think it would have bat an eye at that. Um, so um, uh, that kind of segues into another question um, that some of the audience have been asking. Uh, what are the platforms that you can currently run uh, AR Pet Pals on? So right now, um, Android um, any Android mobile device, um, so phones and tablets, um, iOS, not yet. Um, so we're still working on that, but for our, our release, um, that is definitely going to be Android. And then, and I would just say, hopefully, um, iOS. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, are you thinking of adding other animals as well? Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, definitely possible. Um, <laughs> um, it's pretty much, there's so many, um, you know, animals available. It, it could be, you know, endless the amount of skins that you could have. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I have a couple questions. Yeah. Yeah. Devin. Okay. Um, so what would happen if you were to try to scan a food toy? So I don't know if you guys answered that. Um, yeah, so um Carl, would you be able to comment on that? So can you just when you say scan a food twice, you mean the so same like you, oh sorry, uh if you were to like scan it and then feed mm. the pet and then try to scan it again. Oh, I understand. Oh yeah, so for now, like we look at it as like we're feeding the pet the food. So if you were to let's say feed the pet the same food twice. It would impact it like as if it was eating it twice. Um, that just comes from the perspective of the app, right? It's not you that are eating the food; it's the pet, right? Yeah. And um, also, the app recognizes uh, different foods sometimes, depending on the image. As you saw, the guesses can slightly change due to the recognition model. So uh, for right now, if the pet eats the food twice, I mean, it's like taking two bites of a cheeseburger, you know? 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, and then another question is, do you guys have any plans to implement uh, multiple pets for a user? Um, so that's not something that we talked about. Um, definitely a good idea. Um, but right now, no, we don't have plans, but that, that is a good idea. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. The Webkins model. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Um, so I think you may have answered this already, but I'm still curious. What made you choose AR? Um, yeah, I like I said, um, really just m me personally, my my interests are uh, I'm pretty confident that AR is a very big um, kind of component of our future, especially in gaming and software in general. Um, so I wanted to gain experience developing AR um, because I think that that is going to there's going to be a lot of people in need of uh, AR and VR developers. Yeah. Do you think AR is um, a like a an, a a good like capstone project for future for future semesters like to uh, sink their teeth into or? Totally. Yeah, I think so. I think that like I think most um, developers should be looking into AR for sure, yeah. Where are some of the uh, the places they can start? Like, how did you get from like zero to AR? Uh, so me personally, um, I uh, just have an interest in game development um, and I kind of um, first started with Unity. So I, I guess it really depends what you're trying to do. Um, I uh, had an interest in game development. I had experience with Unity and Unreal Engine, um, and then learned about their AR capabilities. Um, so with Unity, it's very um, plug and play might be too generous of a term, but it's very easy to to start um, an AR app. So like. Um, definitely, you know, when you first open the app and, uh, you know, there's these different AR capabilities, um, you know, I could lie and say, we, we did all this programming for, for tracking different, all this different stuff and did all this 3d math with AR, all this stuff, but no, it, it comes with, um, with a lot of very helpful tools to start with AR. Um, and it's just, it's just using that to make something that you want to make. Cool. That's nice. Um, so we're we're basically in the uh the AR future is what you're saying. Nice. Libraries have so, matured. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, um so there was a question that just popped in on YouTube. Uh what was the biggest challenge in creating this project? Um, so I think that I mean I don't wanna speak for everybody, but um I think just in general there were, there's a lot of big components. Um, so with Unity specifically, it's a very robust tool. Um, there's, there's so much that you can do with it. Um, and then uh, we have, we had our own um, custom database. Um, and then we also have the object recognition, which honestly was a project in of itself. Um, and I think that working on those and then combining it all into one functioning app, I think was definitely the biggest challenge. Yeah. Yeah. That's really yeah. Cool. I'd second that. There are so many moving pieces in this application. Um, not only just dealing with them as one person, but all of us working on each of these different components at different times and syncing them up to get a final build. Just the logistics of that, you know, it's quite a challenge, but um, yeah, I'm glad that we definitely pulled through with this. Yeah, I know Unity projects usually have trouble with like using like Git version control. Um, can you speak to those challenges? Yeah, I was actually gonna make sure I said something about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, essentially, if you make a change, um, in your scene. 
um, and someone's not exactly caught up or if two people make changes at the same time, one makes a PR and then another person makes a PR, you're going to get a, a merge conflict every time. Um, and that is definitely, GitHub is not the best way to go about it. Um, Unity has their own version of, uh, of version control. Um, so yeah, and this is actually um, kind of the second time I personally have had issues with using GitHub uh, last semester. Um, I developed a game in Unreal Engine, um, and that was even worse. Um, and yeah, they just have very, very well-made methods of version control. Like in Unreal Engine, they have basically have a sandbox mode where you can go in with developers and see their characters fly around the world that you're creating. And you can write code in there and they can see the code you're writing. Um, it's very modern. and I And I would like to see, um, I think maybe a change, maybe to if, if there's any students developing in these, in these environments, mm -hmm. um, to be able to use a different, you know, like way of version control. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's good feedback. Um, were there any unexpected challenges or surprises that came up in the development of this project? Um, one big thing was our database getting hacked. Um, <laughs> yeah. I know Alex is uh, sick right now, so I don't know if he wants to talk too much uh, about it. But yeah, that was definitely uh, a, a big challenge. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, yeah, but it happens. It happens in these capstone projects. Like you accidentally drop, you know, a key in the, uh, uh, in, in Git, boom. People are crawling for that. They all they they're they're looking. Uh, even even for small projects, it's crazy. Um, um. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask this. What what was the most what was the most fun part of the project? Huh. Um. For me, uh, personally. Um, I would say working on the animations mm -hmm. um, and just the characters. Um, it's it's fun to kind of go through all of the animations and kind of pick which ones you want uh, and kind of like give a personality to your pet. Uh, so for me personally, I worked on the animations, so I would say that was definitely the most fun. I think for me, like, touching like game dev or AR or anything like this is not something I ever thought I'd do. So it was just fun really learning about like all these different technologies. So yeah, I just had fun learning about all this stuff while doing it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, using Unity web editor was really, really fun. Like it took a second to kind of get acclimated, but once I kind of figured out how to use it, it was cool like interacting with things. I guess the the best thing was really just seeing like end to end processes, like with the object recognition, getting it to work in the server and then getting all the data to populate correctly in the app and just seeing, you know, these processes span these different components is pretty uh, fascinating. Absolutely. Um, okay, before we wrap up, any questions from over here? I've asked my questions. You've asked your questions? Uh, yeah, yeah. Seriously, amazing job. Really great uh, project to end the semester on. Um, yeah, like really, really great job. Everybody, um, you know, we'll do the, I'm not sure if this will come out on the uh, on the Zoom, but a round of applause. <laughs> like, just like silent clapping. Um, but seriously, it was like, it's it's been an amazing semester. I'm going to miss you guys. Um, don't forget to submit everything uh i'm gonna i'm gonna end the stream for our uh, our guests um but it was yeah it's been excellent thanks for everybody that stuck around for literally the entire day that's amazing um seriously uh really really appreciate it um yeah and if you're looking to uh to to see you know the uh 
the recording. It's on capstone.enapplebound.com, which uh, by the way is is the syllabus page. So just just go to Canvas. It's all there. Uh, save it. Um, it was really good. Um, so yeah, really uh, really exciting stuff. I'm so excited to see what you're gonna do next. So uh, keep in touch, um, and I'll see you guys. Yeah, see you. Mm -hmm.